Hello everyone, this is Bob Brown recording uh, update number nine based on more questions and a lot of uh, developments as far as data which unfortunately does not look so good for Nebraska. So are we on the wrong side of the epidemiologic curve? And also somebody asked me if I could spend a little bit more time explaining what's going on here. And so what you have is a wide range of estimates. And I think what confuses people. So just like the, the president said uh, last week, we could have 100,000 deaths, we could have 2 million deaths. So the same range is applied to Nebraska. So as a state, we could have 382 deaths, for example, all the way up to 25,000 roughly, depending on the range of a number of these variables. And this is a spreadsheet that frankly, any business person can out. Just like you're saying, how many widgets can I sell at what profit? and a range of assumptions. This is a simple Excel spreadsheet. So the infection rate, the, one of the key ones is this infection rate. Should it be 3%, 30, 50, 75? Well, it kind of depends. One, the infection rate depends on our uh, job as far as we are for social distancing and can we slow things down and can we do a good job tamping the epidemic down? If not, it will spread through the whole population, but the ran, range of numbers I've heard is anywhere from 30 to 70%. I picked a couple numbers here for a very specific reason. The same thing, there's a case fatality rate may have a wide range. So some examples here. So this is from the Diamond Princess cruise line and so what happened is essentially what looks like rough, roughly 20% of the people on the cruise line did get infected. So if we use a 20% infection rate it starts looking like this and if we use their 1% case fatality rate of the infected we would apply that to the state of Nebraska, that's what we get. The problem is though, this is a, a select case. The exposure was maybe about two weeks for the whole cruise. It started out in the crew potentially, and then we do, and apparently the crew had, some, had a 75% infection rate. So although overall was 20, the real one, if, if it was more applicable, might be maybe we should be using the cruise numbers, not the whole people. And if that's the case, our numbers are dramatically different. Other examples, if we look at the case fatality rates around the world, I think most countries, their numbers are way off because they've given up on testing. They're just trying to st stem the tide and do the best they can to take care of people they have. So the case fatality rate is not 10% like in the UK or 12% in Italy. It's just that so many of these cases are now going unidentified because they're pooling all their resources here. Now, if you look at the two company, countries that have had the best and widely available uh, testing it's Germany and South Korea so their numbers are closer but their fit case fatality rate's gone up a bit and the reason it's gone up again is because the lag between when you get the infection to when you get sick to what you get on the ventilator to when you may die may take two to three weeks potentially so that took a while for those fatalities to catch up so it could be the numbers are in that 1.7 1.8 percent range and so given that, if you sort of let her rip through the community and, and have a worst case scenario like the 75% of the crew and the case fatalities in that 1.7%, you could be talking 25,000 dead Nebraskans. On the flip side, if we do a good job of tamping things down and that 0.66 in the paper was right, maybe we're talking 382. So huge range, but it depends on these variables, all of which are dependent on you guys following your directions, which is our, my biggest concern we have right now is that people are not getting the message. And so, one, some people still are taking that letter, letter rip mentality, and again, I use United Kingdom because they made that decision, and fortunately, they may have changed their mind too late, that an epidemic can have a bigger different uh, impact on the mortality of population than the one, some of them World War I or World War II. The second dip here is the influenza epidemic of 1718, which is as big or bigger than World War I and bigger than World War II. So lettering a rip through the population is a very bad idea. So everybody who needs to, who's thinking that way needs to get honest about this and start understanding the numbers. That is a horrible idea. Uh, the reason, of course, is we have to stay under this bed capacity because if we exceed it, we now don't have enough ventilators and that case fatality rate will jump from not 0.66 but maybe 1, 2, 4, even 5% because not only do people die of coronavirus, people die of heart attacks and strokes because our healthcare system is so overwhelmed. So the letter rip does not work. Do not be swayed by that kind of thinking. Uh, now Nebraska, how are we doing? I was cautiously optimistic a week ago, but I've heard some new information that is making me a little more concerned. One is that the cases in Grand Island specifically have gone up dramatically, and they've, uh, they're have they up in the last I heard today, well, on the site it's 55 in Hall County. However, the, there's a lag between tests being run, positives being reported, getting to the health department, and getting to the state site. So this is probably woefully underneath the actual numbers. So last week I thought maybe we have 600, 1200. I'd say this year we've probably got thousands in Nebraska. We don't know where they are because the tests aren't there yet. So we're waiting for these tests to get back. And some sites, I do think Grand Island is already a hot spot. Uh, unless those companies shut down and quit spreading things around uh, on the meatpacking plant floor of the assembly line, it could spread out through the whole Grand Island community potentially. 
And so if you look at the county level rates, what makes me concerned is if you look at Hall County, which is Grand Island, 25% of the tests being ordered are positive. That means they've got a lot of people who are very high risk, very many high positives. And though the numbers are still small, if you look at the percentage of the population that's testing positive, it's nine times what it is here in Lincoln. And so there could be, they could be already far beyond on that epidemiologic curve and hitting that, that exponential growth phase already. Unfortunately, the same still could be true of Hastings or Kearney, for example. Washington is Blair. We know that hit a nursing home, and that, that's the, the effect of that nursing home being uh, affected in that town. And so what I'm worried about is the other thing is people still driving around. So, for example, uh, this, Kim, this outbreak in Kimball, that could be one guy visiting his drinking buddy in Fort Collins, coming back, belling up at the bar and infecting the whole people in the bar. All that, all the whole Kimball County could be explained by just that one person. Grand Island Clinic, it could have been a birthday party followed by people going out to JBS, followed by another birthday party, all that moving around. And this is where your individual decisions make such a big difference. And then again, what if someone from Grand Island now drives up to Boone County or drives up to Valentine? Now suddenly you've got all those cases spread around. So we may need to consider a travel ban in the near future. Uh, and again, here's the, uh, the, the graphic, which I think is so helpful. One person making a bad decision, belling up to the bar after visiting your buddy in Fort Collins, the birthday party where somebody was infected, and then you go work on the assembly line. All that cascades into the difference between this and this because of a couple bad decisions. Or for example, somebody going to Holmes Lake and playing sand volleyball over the week Sunday, which we had happen. So we do need some enforcement that is badly needed because people are not following the direction. So if we don't want to have a stay at home ban, uh, requirement for everybody, people need to start following the directions or we need to enforce things or we need to go ahead and have that, that stay at home. Uh, so we are basically in the expansional growth cur curve in the U.S. and France, and I think in Nebraska we're also starting that. Uh, it's probably going to be uh, isolated a little bit by our region, but we already know where our likely regions are going to be. Just like we saw Italy, then Spain, the United Kingdom, uh, we're next potentially. So until we have ad, ad, testing like this, we are stuck and we don't know. We are still falling, flying blind. Uh, I think the testing is still not near where it needs to be, so we're still at least one to two weeks around away from having uh, testing. Uh, to, so that's all got to happen before we open back up again, just like the roadmap says. If we can't even do step one yet, which is uh, all people who have symptoms that need to get tested get tested, which we're not there yet, then we can't we'll see for that sustained reduction. We can't even talk about opening things up. So until we get this under control, we've, we're in a holding pattern. Uh, and, so, and just like I said with Tom Frieden's case, we may end up having, unfortunately, this spike I was hoping to avoid. It could happen at least in different places in Nebraska, if not statewide. So until we get past that, we can't talk about opening up and getting to the point where we meet. And we have to start thinking this may be a 9 to 18 month thing. So again, goes back to you. Only you can prevent wildfire. Only you can prevent coronavirus spread. So uh, here it is. This is uh, one of my coworkers uh, driving it was at Holmes Lake, uh, walking around, and sure enough, there's people out there playing sand volleyball. You're not socially distanced. Plus, the big thing people keep wearing it's not the mask; it's your hand. So that volleyball is your vector. So if this person has coronavirus, so does this person. So does this person. So does this person. After an hour of playing volleyball, that's the problem. This I think is totally fine. So getting out and being social, as long as you're maintaining literally that distance. If you're six feet out in, in outdoors, I think your risk is zero. I don't think you even needed that mask if you're outdoors like this and you're six feet apart. This doesn't, even if you have a mask, isn't going to work. This is what we need to avoid. This could be a baseball game. Uh, this could be a birthday party. And no, uh, a couple ladies going to bridge and wearing a mask, that doesn't count. You're still not social distancing. Uh, indoors is much worse. So outdoors uh, socializing, I think, is okay, but you've got to have that six foot spread. Uh, again, because of that one bad decision, those people playing volleyball in Holmes Lake this weekend may have been the difference between an outcome like this and now an outcome potentially like this in Lincoln. So do we need to have a stay-at-home order? I don't know. Uh, I do think some things the governor is saying correct. For example, some of these places like Louisiana have these huge gaping holes in their stay-at-home order, which is you can go to church. Uh, we need to get past that. So in some ways, we have a more restrictive than Louisiana, so it's not completely accurate to look at this. But if there's no enforcement of our 10-person ban, then we do, do probably do need to have a stay-at-home order. So is there, are we going to enforce or aren't we? And I think the other thing is the travel is going to be an issue. So, and the other thing is shelter in place, like I said last time, there's a big difference between shelter in place here and shelter in place here. This is literally my walk to work this morning. So this is no, there's no way I'm going to get coronavirus walking from here to my house, to my office, uh, which only has two people in it now anyway, because everybody else is working from home, which is good. This though is a problem. This is where I think you're, it's going to be hard to control without some types of a shelter in place or very, a lot of limitations. Uh, again, is this okay? This definitely not okay. This could be okay, but only if these three people all live in the same house together, then they're doing this six feet. That's okay, but they can't be sharing anything, can't be sharing the solo cup, can't be sharing the, the takeout, 
can't be sharing any of this needs to be that you need to keep that physical separation because like I said it's your hands the coronavirus has no arms it has no legs it has no wings it's like a sandbur so the sandbur doesn't go anywhere unless you walk by that sandbur and it gets stuck on your on your sock or your shoestring the same thing with the virus it just sits there on the doorknob until you touch it and then don't wash your hands and then spread it to somebody else uh, so again, back to the mask thing, I'll say it again because I think still there's a lot of confusion of this. Uh, should you wear a mask? I'd say the general public does not need an N95 mask. The chances of you spreading something by walking by in a public space is almost zero. It's the hands that are the problem. So the contaminating your hands is, is where the biggest spread is going to happen. So you, the reason you would wear a mask is not because you're protecting yourself from airborne droplets. It's because it keeps your hands from touching your face because the hands is where it's going to spread. Also, if you have it and you're going to cough, when you cough into that mask, it's, most of it's going to get stuck in that mask. So it'd be less likely to spread to anybody else or to the doorknob that somebody else might touch. So the reason you're wearing a mask is not to protect you from inhaling. It's to protect you from touching your face and to prevent you from spreading it, actually. So should I wear a mask? I'd say probably right now, likely any mask will do. I don't think I'm, I'm not wearing one when I go walk the dog, but when I go to the grocery store next time, I'm going to wear a mask. Uh, also wash your hands any time you change location because it's the doorknob, the hand railing, the checkout counter, that's where it's getting spread. Used hand sanitizer. And if you have an N95 mask, give it to your local clinic or hospital because that doesn't really do you much good because it needs to be fitted anyway and most people don't know how to wear the thing. So super rules, back to what we keep saying over again. If you're sick, stay at home. If someone in your hospital is sick, stay at home. Close the schools and the daycare, which I think we've mostly done, but not completely. And the physical distancing in the community. Not social. We do need to be social, but do physical distancing and do it right. And if we do physical distancing appropriately, I think we can still be social. And so we need to get past this. I think there's still a lot of that denial, anger, fear, bargaining. Hopefully you're getting acceptance. Even better yet, there's a new uh, phrase they're calling meaning. And so keep this in, in the back of your mind. When we get through all this, I think there could be a potential a lot of good things that come out of this. But we got to get through it first, and we need to hit that acceptance phase and start thinking rationally and quit arguing based on fear and denial. So again, we need to get out. Uh, it's good to do things like this. We need the fresh air, the vitamin D for our sanity. We are likely in this for at least four to eight weeks, I think. Uh, and to maintain our sanity, we're going to have to start doing stuff like this too. So hopefully we can avoid the stay-at-home ban, but that depends on you guys following your directions.